Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with the Master Budget Part 5. We're going to continue with the income statement. So if you haven't looked at the prior budgets, you want to probably look at the prior budgets. We are, we'll be using part of them in order to create the budgeted income statement. After this, we will be able to... First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program. But that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. List components of the master budget. Compile the budgeted income statement. All right, so let's go through the quick list once again of the components of the budget. We have the sales budget. We need to do it in this order. We then have the production budget. We then can create from the production budget, which was created from the sales budget, the direct materials budget, the direct labor budget, the overhead budget, as well as the capital expenditures for large projects and equipment we might be purchasing, selling an administrative budget. We then created the cash uh, budget, the cash flow budget. Then we, in between that, in between making our financial statements, such as the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows, we needed the cost of goods sold, and therefore we had to create the cost of goods manufactured. So the cost of goods manufactured and the cost of goods sold calculations have been done in order to help us with the budgeted income statement in that case. Now we're going to move to the one of the major statements, of course, one of the major statements that we think of when we think of the budget. That's the income statement because we're usually thinking about how we're going to perform over time. And that's going to be income statement, the timing of how we're doing. So that's what we're going to move to at this point in time. So let's take a look at all the budgets we've seen so far. We're going to be using some of these in order to create the budget income statement. We started off with the sales budget. What are we going to make? We then use that to create the production budget. How much stuff are we going to produce? And then we use that to see how much materials we're going to need in step three. And then in step four, we needed to see how much uh, direct labor we were going to need. And then in step five, we had the factory overhead then the selling and administrative and finally the general and administrative areas when then we did the budgeted cost of goods manufactured budget and we also did the cash flow budget was in there as well and then the, the cost of goods sold those are going to be the major components we will then need going forward here to the budgeted income statement so now we are on the budgeted income statement and first piece will of course be the sales so the sales we're going to jump back to the sales budget and that's where we're going to have the total sales. We just jump back to step one sales budget. That's going to be line one of the budgeted income statement. Then we have the cost of goods sold calculation, which of course we have calculated and we did that in the budgeted cost of goods sold. So remember that's in the prior recording where we took a look at the cost of goods manufactured. This number here, 
which we needed in order to create the cost of goods sold calculation, then we can, of course, take the cost of goods sold number and plug that into our budgeted income statement at this point. Then we're going to have the gross profit. That's going to be the sales minus the cost of goods sold. That will give us the gross profit calculation as normal. Then we're going to have the operating expenses, all other expenses here. Within the operating expenses, we are going to have the sales commission and sales salary. So we're going to pick those numbers up by jumping back to the selling and uh, selling expense budget. So we have these two items. We didn't total them up in this budget, so we'd have to add them up. So we got July, August, September for the sales commission and July, August, and September for the sales salary. If we added these up and then added these up, then we would come up with the 132.48 for the sales commission and the sales salary 10,005. All right, then we have the general administrative salaries and the long-term note interest. And we're gonna pull that from here. So we got the general administrative, this one we did total up for the 33,000 uh, and the 15. We're just summing up the quarter, uh, the full quarter, which is of course the three months in this case. So here's the 33 and the 15. General administrative long-term note interest. Then we have the short-term note interest. I'm just going to pull that number in. We did that on the cash flow statement. Uh, so you could pick it up from the statement of cash flows where we calculated the interest on the uh, short-term note. And then if we sum these items up, we're summing up the operating expenses. So we pull them into the enter column. We, if we add these up and pull them out to the outer column, we have the total operating expenses of the 188,868. And now we have the gross profit, profit and the operating expenses. We're going to subtract those two out just as we normally would. 255, 335 minus the 188,868 would give us the 66,467. That's income before taxes. Now we're going to assume a tax rate of 35%. We generally break out the taxes separately as a separate light item, even though they are an, an expense, you know, related to all the other types of expenses because taxes tend to distort the picture. And we know that taxes vary in relation to net income. So we're usually going to break that out at the bottom here. So we're going to take the 66,467. We're going to assume 0 0.35, 35% tax rate. And that will give us the tax 23,263. Uh, so there's the 23,263. Then if we take the income before taxes minus the taxes, that will give us the net income, the 43,204 net income.